Greetings and salutations, Second Star Eight, back with some more Rage Shadow Legends, and it has been a while since I posted anything. A week ago, we had stuff go down at work, it really hit the fan, and I have been working 12, 14, 16 hour days. I almost had to work like a 24 hour shift today, um, but I think we've circumvented the worst of it. We are coming out the other side. Um, my, I'm physically exhausted, mentally uh, my capacity is not all there right now. I'm going to try to make coherent sentences uh, the best I know it to my ability. Point is, in Raid Shadow Legends, it is double summons event for Void Shards all this weekend, and I'm going to kind of put my troubles aside. I'm not going to think about work for the next, you know, 20 minutes or so as I summon these 31 Void Shards that I have managed to hoard. Um, I'm not going to think about police helicopters patrolling overhead, making sure people are inside their houses. I did not expect that to be a part of uh, of life uh, uh, last week, but or two weeks ago. I, but it, you know, reality is is what it is. So let's just not think about that for the next twenty minutes, or fifteen minutes, however long it takes me to get through this, and we're just gonna enjoy some void summons. And we'll see uh, we'll see what we got. I I of course want a Madame Saris. You know, I still don't have one. I last time I had this many shards. It was 18. I think that's the most I've had. Or maybe it was 21. Anyway, it was a it was a it was a significant amount, and I did not get Madame Saris. And it was a 10 times summons event for her, and I I, I failed miserably. And then last time, uh, when I had the sacred charge, I just wanted a miscreated monster. That's all I wanted. Did not happen for me. So I'm gonna I'm like this. You know, I'm hoping that instead Madame Saris will manifest for me during these summons today. Um, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up. But it's fine. I, I'm good with it. Uh, I haven't I haven't shaved in a week. I have empurpled my hair to get in uh, to get in the spirit of things. So uh, let's just jump on in to these void summons. Um, please uh, comment along uh, w with anything that you think I should focus on. Um, uh, please send me a like and subscribe if you want some more stuff. I I have a bunch of videos. I was halfway through when things went down at work. So uh, hopefully over the weekend I will have a respite from all of the bad things that have been going on in the past week. And you can focus on more fun things, like like uh, like summoning stuff from the portal here, which is uh, undergoing kind of some kind of nuclear meltdown. Okay, that's fine. Let's do it. I cleared out space. We're good. Let's start summoning. Go. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay. We're just going to spin, keep me in suspense for a while. Okay, and this is Reliquary Tender, who is a really excellent rare. I love Reliquary Tender. I'm sure everyone's familiar with her, but she is a, a attacks an enemy, has a 20% chance of placing a 25% decrease attack debuff for two turns. Man, nothing wrong with that. Decrease attack on an A1 is something you always want to look for in a champion. There's a lot of utility uh, just about everywhere. Um, Tender's Watch is her A2, removes all the buffs from all allies, then places a 7.5% continuous heal buff on them for two turns. If you ascend it, it removes all the buffs and, and then places a 15% continuous heal. Um, and that's on a five turn cooldown that you can get down to three turns. That's an excellent A2. And then Call to Life is a revive. 30% hit point and fills a turn meter by 30%. You can get it down to five turn cooldown. Relic Career Tender is amazing. And I wish she wasn't void. This is someone that, that just everyone can use uh, as, they're, uh, as they're getting through the game. Nice. And I only had one. So now I can actually build one and not just keep one in the vault for uh, uh, food purposes. Um, Fusion purposes. Chevalier, I love Chevalier. Chevalier is actually one of my favorite champions. Um, I don't know if mine's fully booked or not. I have uh, like three of them in my vault. So maybe I will, uh, when I want to go back to focus on my Chevalier, I might bring him to six stars at some point. Um, I just had a, a dearth of six star food lately. I just have been, been too busy. Uh, there's actually been days when I haven't finished my dailies. I haven't finished my 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 challenges. I haven't finished my my uh, my game pass stuff. I haven't done. Uh, it's been a bad week. Anyway, Chevalier, excellent. If you have a Chevalier, uh, definitely focus on one if you if you have the time. Uh, hack through attacks an enemy two times with a twenty percent chance of placing an extra hit. That is amazing, especially if you stack the limitless gear on top of that. Ah, oh, so cool. And then it ignores block damage and shield. What a fantastic A one. This is really cool. I've seen him hit ten times with his A1. It's awesome. Uh, I have a video somewhere. I don't remember which video it was, but um, one of the Ice Skull minions. He just takes it out by himself in one turn. It just brrr, really cool. 
Uh, his stern rebuke is attacks an enemy with a 50% chance of placing a stun. So we have a nice stun on a, on a four to three turn cooldown. And then uh, Lord Protector, a 30% increased defense buff and a seven half continuous heal on all allies for two turns. That you can get down to four turn cooldown. It's just good stuff. Chevalier is, is, is awesome. All right, let's keep this going. Two really good rares in a row, and that, that, that pleases me. Okay, well, I guess that stops now with Harrier. We're, okay, we're not going to get into Harrier. Oh, that's right. There's also a champion uh, a chase tournament. So this is actually, uh, uh, at least Harrier is serving that purpose, because otherwise he's just going to be food. Not that he's bad. He's just not super useful. I don't even want to get into his skills. It's just not something I want to I want to deal with right now. Okay, and the Marquis. Uh, not something I want to deal with at the moment. Next, we have, oh, our first epic coming through, and it is Bertel Fellhammer. Awesome, I don't have this guy, and I really like his uh, his kit. Uh, his skill set is nice, and I like, actually, I kind of like his armor, too. It's kind of cool. Actually, looks like a beetle. Does he look like a beetle? Stag beetle? Okay, so... Bertel Fellhammer. He has really good attack animations too. They're <laughs> it's really cool. I love the his A2 is really cool looking when he attacks. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing a 100% heal reduction buff for two turns. So uh, obvious utility in Spirit Keep, but also a lot of places heal reduction is nice. Uh, Fate Protection is his A2. Attacks an enemy three times. Places a shield buff on this champion equal to 30% of the damage inflicted for three turns. Uh, Again, pretty cool. So you're stacking damage, and that comes back at you as as protection. That's kind of a cool uh, cool combo. Okay, and then he has a passive paranoia. Places a counterattack buff on this champion for one turn at the start of each round. Places a counterattack buff on this champion for one turn at the end of their turn. So he always has a counterattack available to him. So that that's really cool. And what is his ascension level three unlock? That is ally attack in dungeons by uh, thirty two percent. All right, well, that's cool. Brittle Fennel Hammer is, is just a really good, really good champion. Um, I don't know where I would use him. Uh, my teams are all pretty set, but at least I'm excited to have him on my roster because he's pretty sweet. All right, next. Hmm, what have we here? Is this Hero Specs good? Yes, I had to feed my Hero Specs. Uh, uh, just recently, right? Yeah, I, ha I had actually this is the second time we've had to feed him. He, he's been the part of he was part of the torment fusion too. So every horse specs I get, I have to feed him to uh, uh, to a champion for fusion food. Um, but he's cool. I, he he doesn't do everything. He doesn't do everything like the the, the best possible uh, percentage or damage level. But uh, like he has the low poison on his A one. He's got a. Uh, the, the low turn meter fill on his A2. Um, but the the revive is the same as, um, what's your name, Rel Reliquary Tender. Uh, so a horse specs is pretty cool. And plus he has the speed arena by 15%, which is just fine. Uh, again, he's just one of those guys, if you get him early, he's a, he's a cool champion to build because he does a lot of important things at the outset. Okay, not going to help me much, but I do like that champion. All right, and Vanguard is pretty worthless, pretty worthless champion. Um, I don't remember why. Decreased defense buff for one turn, and the target's defense is lower than champions. Oh yeah, like how are you ever gonna know? Like, you never know when this is gonna be useful or not, or when you're gonna wanna. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, attacks the enemy, places provoke. If he's under, okay, this is just too many things. You know, why is that necessary? Why have one thing? Uh, uh, why do you, ha do you have to have one thing to do another thing on a just a rare? I don't know. I don't, I'm not mad at you. Go away, Vanguard. I don't want to talk to you. All right. Let's keep moving on. I have a lot to, Man. I don't know where I got 30 void turns from. I really have, like, absolutely no recollection of acquiring these. Oh, Ifrit. Again, he's kind of like Horse Spectre. does a lot of cool things, just not uh, the, the, the best version of them. Uh, a 15% weaken, so the 30% weaken on his A1. Attacks enemy places a 25% decrease attack debuff for two turns. Damage increases according to the cha this champion's max hit points. So that can be kind of cool um, if you can really get his hit points high. But again, my feeling, you know how I feel about these hit point based champions. They just don't hit hard enough. Uh, decreases the damage received by 50% if the damage from a single hit exceeds 30%. So that's kind of cool. He's a, he's a nice tank. He's, he's fine. He's, he's fine. 
He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. I'll never use him, but he's fine. Okay, Steadfast Marshall. Uh, again, he was fusion feud, <laughs> fusion food during a lot of our uh, fusions, and um, he's and I, again, he's 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 fine. Um, yeah, he's he's not someone I think they would really use a lot. I think he does have one. The, the, yeah, the increased defense on this change for two turns, and then um, getting extra turn when you send it. I don't know. I guess it's fine. Oh, that's right. He veils all allies except this champion for two turns. So that's kind of his his, uh, his cool ability. But still, I don't know if he has enough utility to make him uh, super useful in a lot of areas. Okay, let's go. Okay, and there we go. That looks familiar. Hair specs. Okay, good. So now I have a, a one that I can build and if I felt the need to and one that I can keep for fusion feud. Why can't I say this? Why can't I say food? Ugh. Daywalker. Oh, he's he's fun. He was one of the first uh, <laughs> voids I ever got when I first started playing. Uh, the attacks the enemy, plays an extra hit. The target has more hit points than this champion. Uh, good, so good against bosses. Places 25% ally protection on allies for two turns. Not bad. Having a nice rare, you know, ally protect. Ally protect is super useful. And then he has a self revive. Um, and then attacks all enemies. So that's kind of a really cool skill when it procs. Okay, next up. Come on, let's go. I don't see something good. I haven't seen anything good in a while. Like I said, I haven't seen anything good in a while. You're just not listening to me. I think Ox has a stun, right? Attacks the enemy, fills the tank's turn meter by 10% if the attack is critical. Um, so that's cool if you have a lot of stacking turn meter stuff, then he can attack a lot, which is, which is useful. I'm trying to think of good things to say about these champions, right? Tax the enemy has a 60% chance of placing a 30% decreased defense buff for two turns. Okay, thank you very much. Tax the enemy has a 50% chance of placing a block cooldown skills. Okay, so Ox is not something that we're going to be using. All right, let's keep going. Hmm, okay, Stitched Beast. This Stitched Beast has some good skills. Uh, attacks the enemy two times. It's not that one. Tax the enemy two times. Each hit has a 24% chance of placing a weaken. The weaken is 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 pretty sweet, um, especially combined with a defense down. But he doesn't have a defense down, so this is his good skill. Tax the enemy decreases target's turn meter by 50%, um, and then if you ascend it, fully depletes target's turn meter. So that's really good um, in Spider, for instance. Uh, Stitch Beast is not bad. I think I have one kicking around somewhere, most likely in my vault. Okay, well, this is a lot of blue. Okay, Renegade. Renegade is awesome. Uh, if you remember Stu's video, uh, he's like, I don't need Prince Kaimar, I can use Renegade. Uh, it's kind of cool uh, that you're able to use um, a rare, even though it's a void rare, in the place of a, uh, a, a legendary. Um, so anyway, if you're unfamiliar with Renegade, uh, attacks an enemy, has a 24% chance of placing a 50% heal, re heal reduction debuff, which is based on attack and speed, which is, which is interesting. And has 100% heal uh, when you ascend it. Lash out attacks at random three times, has a 50% chance of placing a 15% decreased speed debuff for two turns, places a 25% decreased accuracy debuff for two turns if the target has any active buffs. There's a lot going on there, probably not necessarily have so much going on there, but it doesn't matter because we only really care about her A3, which is the sacrificial ritual. Um, a seven turn cooldown, which is long, we can get it down to five turns uh, with the uh, expeditious use of rare tomes, decreases the cooldown of all ally skills by two turns, which is awesome. This skill does not affect this champion or other champions with this skill. Uh, this champion will receive damage equal to 30% of their max hit points. This will happen even if it kills the champion. So, uh, anyway, it's 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 a really really useful skill. So, um, let's continue, shall we? I have a couple of renegades. I don't have any built though. That should probably change. No oh, paragon. Uh, Paragon, a lot of people like to use Paragon. Oh, who's, who is it that always has Paragon as their spider lead? <sighs> was it? I can't, someone remind me in the comments who it is that, that always has the Paragon. They also had the four armagers. It was Paragon and four armagers in Spiders 20. It was awesome. It was so, it was so cool to see. God, I'm mad at who. I can't remember who did that. Oh well. Uh, attacks the enemy has a 50% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%. Damage inflicted is proportional to defense. So nice defense-based champion, 
um, with, a, with a pretty interesting skill set. Places an unkillable buff and a 25% increase attack buff on a target ally for two turns. So a tur two turn unkillable, um, they can get down to a two turn cooldown. And you can kind of see how uh, that could be a pretty cool skill to have. And then uh, Life Shackles attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing a 50% heal reduction buff and 25% decrease attack debuff for two turns. Damage is looked proportional to defense again. Again, not a bad skill that you can ascend to get the 100% um, heal reduction, which I think you always should if you if you plan on using the champion. Definitely ascend um, uh, at least three times to get to get that skill. Uh, but the, it's the uh, the damage control that is the selling point for Paragon. That's pretty sweet. All right, what's this? What's this? What's this? Wow, this is a lot of blue. I already have you, Steadfast Marshal. Not only do I have several copies of you in my vault, I already drew you today. So, that displeases me. Ah. Okay, come on. I want something good. This is this is not good. Oh my god. Alright. Alright, 14 left. I'm halfway through, and I've gotten one epic. That is inauspicious, to say the least. Hmm. You know, you'd think the purple hair would show my commitment and you'd think that the game would sense this and and want to reward me for my commitment and it's just not happening <sighs> okay it's all right that's all right wow wow arbalester really cool champion design he's really cool looking champion i like the way she looks cool setup nice animations unfortunately the skill set i mean you probably have seen so many Arblusters you don't even think about her anymore. Attacks an enemy, 25% chance of transferring one random buff from this champion to the target. So it kind of has that uh, um, abess, abess, abess uh, ability. Lethargy, attacks one enemy, has a 60% chance of putting the target's skills on cooldown. Um, that's not bad. And then Soul Break, attacks enemy, damage increases according to the number of debuffs on the target. So she actually isn't bad um, of a champion. She just doesn't have a super lot of utility, she's kind of just a damage dealer, and when you're not kind of making a team comp, um, you really only have not a whole lot of flexibility to do stuff like that. This is kind of the problem you have with the Pitiless one. Even the Pitiless one is like a much better champion than she is, uh, you kind of run into the same problem. Oh, Basher! Well, as far as epics go, that is not thrilling to get, but let's just talk about it anyway. Attacks the enemy. 75% chance of placing 25% weakened buff for two turns. So at least it's the good one, but, you know, attacks one enemy, 75% chance. I mean, you can get it up to uh, um, 100%, 95% uh, chance. That's weird. But, uh, you know, it's just super not thrilling for a, for a void epic. Attacks all enemies, increases the cooldown of all the target skills by one turn. That's all right. Um, you can do it by two turns, though, if you ascend it. That's not, that's not a bad. A2 is not bad at all. Attacks four times at random, 75% chance of placing a block, block buffs the buff for two turns. Okay, thank you, uh, Basher. Not a super exciting epic. Are, are they sure that this on? They did turn this on, right? Uh, another Paragon, okay. Come on, guys. We want some more exciting stuff in this. Again, more exciting stuff than this. Skirmisher, though, was another one of my my early uh, my early voids. Um, I remember in liking her at first. Tax enemy twice. Tax enemy two times. Fix fifteen percent more damage against targets that have no active buffs. Tax an enemy on her A two decreases the target's turn meter by twenty percent if this attack is critical. And then tax all enemies removes one random buff from each enemy. I used her for a long time, so I just didn't have anything better when I first started playing. So, you know, if you first started playing, she's kind of fun to use. She's cool animations and stuff. But now I'm I left less than ten. Nine shards left, and I have not gotten anything to really write home about, like at all. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay, retainer. Thank you for playing. I appreciate it. And now eight. Oh, come on. I need something good. This is payback, right? For on my free to play account, I pulled one void shard um, when it was when it was a non void shard time just for the heck of it because my pulls were bad. So, I pulled one void shard and it ended up being Siffy and that was kind of kind of rescued the entire scenario. But uh this isn't good. I 
Painsmith's kind of cool. He really is. I don't I think I'd waste the resources in building him, but he is kind of an interesting champion. Attacks an enemy. Uh, that's not the interesting one. Attacks one enemy. Enemy is killed by the skill, cannot be revived. Maybe it's this one that I liked. Attacks one enemy. Damage increased by 15%. Okay, I'm wrong. Maybe it isn't Painsmith that I'm thinking of that was super cool. Alright. There's some other rare dwarf out there that I enjoyed. This is not him. Okay, come on. This is a lot of blue. <laughs> hey, Studucer. Studucer is a really, really good champion. I'm sure everyone's super familiar from probably watching Stu Gaming's videos. He he always uh, runs a Studucer um, in his uh, in his late level late game content. It's pretty sweet. Studucer is a very versatile champion. I've talked about him many times before too, so I won't rehash um, this. Other than the fact that you know being in undead hordes and and maintaining that kind of physique, I wish I looked that good when I'm dead. I wish I looked that good now. Okay. Guys. 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 You five left. You're killing me. You're killing me, guys. Wow. This is this is not a good series of pulls there, Plarium. I, they, they did. They forgot to turn it on. It has, there's no other explanation. There's no other explanation for this. 30, and I've gotten two epics. And this is, uh... Hmm. Come on. Plarium. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Seriously. Okay. Okay, here we go. Please be... Oh, hey, you know what? I don't have a Light Sworn. I don't. I don't. This is... I, 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 uh, I'm kind of excited that I have a Light Sworn. I know that he's not news to anybody, but I do like Light Sworn, and I was like, gosh, you know, I'd really like to have a Light Sworn for this. Um, but uh, I never had one, so now I do. So this is kind of cool. Attacks enemy three times. Um, I love the three hit. I love three hit A ones and multi hit A ones. Uh, really please me, just because you can use. You know, you can use them everywhere. Decreases the target's turn meter by ten percent. I'm always like kind of hesitant to bring stuff into Fire Knight if they only have one hit A one. Okay, attacks one enemy. Places a fifty percent decrease attack debuff and a three percent decrease speed debuff for two turns. Really good A two. And then, of course, he has the 60% increased defense buff on allies for two turns. And then you get a, you get a revive uh, when you ascend it. So uh, that's cool. Unfor it's not a, the good kind of revive. It's a, it's a kind of you have to think that you're going to die <laughs> revive. Uh, so it's not totally as useful as a regular revive. But, um, but still, uh, Light Sworn is a very nice champion. And I am pleased. All right, let's see what we have for these two left. Come on. Something good, guys. You gotta bail me out. That's not bailing me out. That's not bailing me out at all. Wow. Okay, guys. One more. One more. Let's see what we get. Still no Madam Saris. What's the deal with me not getting a Madam Saris? Does the game know how much I want a Madam Saris? And just don't want me to have a Madam Saris? They give me another Dark Elf. So why couldn't it have been Madam Saris? Alright, Harvester is, is not a good champion. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna close that. Okay, so that was completely unexciting but it, i guess the the stats are i got one out of every 10 again epic every, out of every 10 shards which i guess is kind of what you should expect i am going to pull the sacred because uh, i was a little bit unhappy with what i got so let's pull a sacred let's kind of put a bow on this on on this uh video with a sacred and look at this i got an epic and it is long beard don't hate me i have a long beard already this is a duplicate legendary for me, so. But still, you know, that's you know what? Let's you want to pull another one? Do you guys want to pull another one? Since I have, since I get that, let's pull another one. Let's see what I get. Let's see what I get. Maybe I'll get something I don't have. You never know. I'm in. I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood. Ah, oh, Hexia, not a good champion, but I don't have her. So this is <laughs> this is not a duplicate. All right, let's let's investigate Hexia and just see what she does because I have no idea. Grave Rot attacks one enemy with a 35% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns. Chances to place this debuff increased by 10%. Priest debuff placed on this champion. Okay, I don't like having to rely on other things to, to, to impact your ability to do things, so that displeases me, but uh, let's move on to the A2. Soul Reap attacks one enemy, grants an extra turn, and places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion for two turns. If the attack kills an enemy. Wow, that's a lot of... Why are they... Why do you have to do so many things to do other things? 
That's a really weird design. Attacks of one enemy. Heals this champion by 15% of the damage inflicted. The heal increases by 10% for each dead enemy. Okay. Alright. So I guess, alright. As the fight continues, you get stronger. I can see that. Attacks of one enemy. Heals champion by 50%. Heal increases by 10% for each dead enemy. Places a 3% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns. Alright, so uh, kind of a worthless epic. Um, yeah, so I got it. This was not a good day for me. This isn't the. This is kind of isn't really what I was hoping for uh, as I suffered through uh, a very hard week, but it's okay. It's just a game. We're good. Um, if you see something that I missed that you have a really cool use for, or uh, another way to look at champion, like like second star man, basher is amazing. Why are you writing off basher? If you have a valid way to use basher, then I would really love to hear it, guys. Um, but regardless, I don't, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're having a good day, and it's going to be a good weekend. So let me know what kind of vo void pulls you get. Um, why couldn't I get a Scylar? I just wanted a Scylar, but I didn't get that either. Okay, but I'm not complaining. We're all good. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and hopefully uh, my days will become slightly less stressful, and I can uh, finally finish those videos that I've been working on for so long. Guys, take care. Thank you, and I will see you next time.